Pupper, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing, Pupper? We should get a special treatment. Huh? Oh, look at her. Look at her. There's my girl. Look at that camera. What's up, YouTube? So today, we're doing array essentials. The four methods that you should be using on arrays that simplify and are faster than normal methods, basically four loops, kind of slow. But also this helps when you're in the interview and they're like, can you solve this little uh, puzzle for us? And you whip one of these out instead of doing the typical for loop or something like that and you just solve it right away with this one step. It really shows your knowledge of the language. So that's what we're going to be talking about. The first one we're going to talk about is index of. Now I don't think this works on Internet Explorer 7 or below, but I don't know who uses that anymore. So basically this just lets you search an array to see if something exists or not. Now normally you'd have to do a for each or a for loop and search each item and then compare it. But now you can just look directly in it and what I, what I mean by that is let's say we have uh, normally you'd have to loop over this and check but now you can just say uh, dot index of and then you put in let's say let's say five. Does five exist? Index of five is greater than minus one which just means Greater than minus one just means does it exist? Is it in there? And this should return true. And that is how this works. But let's jump into the code for the example. All right, so we're here looking at the code now. We're gonna take a look at index up first. Let's say you're in an interview and the employer says, we have a list of things and we want you to check to see if something's in that list and if it is, remove it. Now normally you do some sort of for loop and loop over it and check against a condition and then have to move it around in the array and then remove it. But with index of, you can simply directly check if something exists in an array or not. So let me show you. We're using var here because we're going to be compiling this down in Chrome or Firefox or just a browser. So you'll notice we have some pizza ingredients and we don't want jalapenos and it looks like there's some jalapenos in here. We don't want that. So we're, we need to check the ingredients list to see if that's there. So let's say if the pizza ingredients dot index of, this is what you're checking with dot index of and exactly what you're looking for in the array is greater than minus one. That's what this means. Whatever you want in the array, greater than minus one, does it exist? If it does, we're going to say, no thanks, that's way too spicy. Can't handle that. Actually, I love jalapenos. And then we're going to want to remove it. So let's go to pizza ingredients dot splice. That's how you remove specific things out of an array. And we want to remove the jalapenos, pizza ingredients dot index of jalapenos. So we know it exists already and we want to remove it. So we don't need to check with this if it exists. We already know it's there, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to remove 4 and we're only going to remove one item. So index of 4 and the only one item that we want. And then we're going to relog our pizza ingredients to make sure it's gone. And if it is, now we're good. So let's go ahead and copy this here and then paste it into your console. Hit enter. So it says too spicy, no thanks, because it did find jalapenos. We're going to relog it after we've removed it and we can see that there's no more jalapenos in there. So now we're good. The next one we're going to talk about here is the for each. Now you have your typical for loop demonstrated here where you start at zero or whatever you start at and then you set your condition to end and then you set your iterator up or down. Now with a for each loop you just tack on the for each method onto the fruits here so you type, uh, you type. <laughs> this is a little bit abstract explaining it um, when you have a for each basically it just loops over each item in the array automatically and you can change it as you loop and it's that simple it's pretty straightforward let's jump into the code and you can see it more clearly here so let's go ahead and take a look at the for each so let's say we have a list of fruits banana apple orange strawberry and we want to check and count how many of these are not an apple very basic example but this is how you can use it so we have our list of fruits in the array here and we have not apple and it's set at zero because 
we have to initialize the variable. So we have uh, the fruits dot for each fruit. If the fruit is not an apple, we want to log this variable and then increment it up one. So if we take this and highlight it and paste it into our console, so you can see we have 0, 1, 2, and that counts as 3. So three of them aren't fruits. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think we can go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next one that we have is the map function. It's basically a for each, except you come out with a new array at the end instead of changing the one that you looped over. So for each changes the one that you loop over if you want to, and map, you end up with a new variable and you have to return it to be able to see it. You don't have to do that in a, a for each. So what I mean by that is, is uh, if, you, if you loop over, so what I mean by that is, with a for each, you can just loop right over these numbers and it will change depending on whatever you put in your for each. So if you wanted to add one, your numbers would be looped over and you'd add one, this would be two, and this would be three, four, and this, these are all increment by one. And then num would be that new number. Versus if you have map, you need to take this and you need to map it. So you basically give it a, give it a new name, new numbers, and then you map it. And you can do the exact same thing, except you still have your old one here. This one stays. And then this one is going to be, this is going to be new. And this one is going to be old. That's, that, that's the difference. For each, you keep your old one and you change it. And map, you have a new one. And you, 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 let me show you in the code what that looks like. Let's go ahead and jump in. So you'll see that we're looking at the map function now. It looks a little bit more complicated than the last one, but it's not. We just have two examples here. We have this bottom one and this top one. I made two examples for this one because the first one is so straightforward that it'll only take a second. So let's say we have a list of numbers, which we do, one, two, three, four, five, and we want to map it. So we need to create a new variable. So let's make variable after math here. And we're going to map the old one. So numbers.map, and then you give it a function, and whatever that function is taking, it's taking numbers. So we're going to put numbers into it. And then we're going to return each one of these numbers plus one. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this and see what that does. You get two, three, four, five, six. So all these were incremented by one. Fairly straightforward. If we look at numbers, it's still the same, one, two, three, four, five. But if we look at aftermath, it's new. So now we have an additional list of data, which is what map does for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. You can see we have a, 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 an array of objects here, and we have first name and last name, but we want, we want to add an item that has their whole name. So it'd be Benny Benjamin. So it'd be whole name, and then for the key, and then the value would be Benny Benjamin, his whole name. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make a new function that makes this pretty. So we have a new and pretty function here. And then we're going to return, because you have to return inside of a function if you want it to exist. We're going to take this, and we're going to map it. And we're going to map the items inside of the array. So we're going to make a new, we're going to make a new key and value inside the array. And to do that, we just have item.fullName, which is what the key will be. And then we want it to be the first name and the last name joined together, but we want a dash between it. So that's how you do that. And then you return the item. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We copy this. We paste it. You can see that the new object will have my first name, my full name, divided by the dash there, and then my last name. And the same thing for the others. Whenever you map a function, you have to return it. That is key. If you, if you map it and you don't return it, nothing will, well, nothing will show up, nothing will happen. So always remember to return in a map function. So the fourth one we're going to talk about here is filter. And filter does basically what you think it would do. So Let's say we have some numbers, our numbers here, and you use filter to basically do exactly what it says, and that's 
filter out stuff that you don't want and keep stuff that you do want. Let's say that we want to keep the numbers above 10. So we don't, we don't want these numbers here, we just want these two. So the first thing that you have to do is make a function that checks this for numbers above 10. So you need, you need to make a function for that. Squiggle brackets are hard. All the numbers greater than 10. And that's what we want. So we got num.filter according to this check. So let me show you what that looks like inside the code. All right, so let's take a look at the final one. It's the filter function. And to start off a filter function, you need to create a callback or basically make the criteria that you want to check stuff by. So we made a function here called check, and we're going to be checking some numbers. And we're going to return all the numbers above 90. So then you take your data, which we have our variable number filter here, and it has 32, 2, 98, 119 and 54. And to filter it, you just toss on dot filter to your data and then you pass in the function with criteria into the filter parameters. So we take our check function and we pass it into the filter here. And that is called a callback. When you take a function and you put it into a parameter of another function, that's a callback. And so if you copy and paste this, Let's see what we get. So we've now eliminated 2, 32, 54, and we have 98 and 119. That was a quick and simple filter. So let's say that you're in an interview and they give you an array of objects and it's a list of foods and stuff like that. And they want you to take away all the vegetables because no one has time for vegetables, right? Uh, protein, that's that's where it's at. So first things first, you need to make a callback or basically the criteria that you're gonna filter by. So let's make a function for that. It's called vegetable filter. And we'll filter out all the vegetables. It's gonna be looking at foods. And we're gonna return the type of foods because we only want meat. So let's have a look at our data here. This is our foods. And foods.type, so we can see foods.type meat foods.type meat, and there's a vegetable. We don't want that. Let's kick it out. So we add the dot filter on the end of it, and then we add our checking criteria, which we created earlier up here, our callback. So you pass that in here, and if you copy this, paste it, and put it into your console, you now have a uh, only two objects in that array. We have chicken, 399 pound, and it's meat, and we should have our pork. And then we have our pork, 299 pound, and it's meat, and vegetables are gone. So, so to summarize here, we have index of, check things in an array. We have for each, loop over the array, and do things to it, map, loop over the array, and do things to it, but you end up with a new list, and you still have the old one, and then we have filter, which is just remove things from the array that don't match the criteria that you gave the filter function or the filter method. Hopefully this video helped you and you can kind of see more clearly how these things work. I'm telling you, if you pull these things out in an interview, when you get these type of teaser questions and toy problems, you're going to really, you're going to, you're going to wow the interviewer. So if this helped you, Make sure to leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the bell, subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section below. And I will also link my GitHub down there so you can see everything that I've already coded. You can go to it, you can copy and paste it, you can download it, you can rearrange things, put your own spin on it. Anything that you want to do to it, it's down there. Make sure to check it out. If you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon. Check that out if you want to. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.